Approach of Concepts of Public Opinion, Communication, and Information Public and Opinion With the rise of the term public in the 18th century, the concept of public opinion gained credence. The English term public opinion dates back to the 18th century and has derived from the French l'opinion, which was first used in 1588 by Montaigne. Researchers agree that due to the existence of many publics, more than one public opinion can exist at the same time. Therefore, we have to speak about public opinions. What is public opinion? The general accepted definition of public opinion is that it can describe the attitudes held by a significant number of people on matters of government and politics. Thus, public opinion plays an important role in the political sphere. However, public opinion can also be defined as the complex collection of opinions of many different people and the sum of all their views. In this respect, public opinion is difficult to be defined because not everyone shares the same views and there are many groups and issues to account for. Approach of Concepts of Public and Opinion and Theories on Public Opinion The study of the public opinion process in social science literature often includes psychological attitudes and beliefs, social group discussion and norms, and political elite perspectives presented in the media components. Adam Smith, one of the earliest classical economists, refers to public opinion in his Theory of Moral Sentiments. However, the philosopher Jeremy Bentham was those who fully developed theories of public opinion. He brought in utilitarian philosophy in order to define theories of public opinion, and he highlighted that public opinion had the power to ensure that rulers would rule for the greatest happiness of the greater number. In the early 1900s, Walter Lippmann painted a pejorative portrait of the public, being seen as one that was unable to process information deeply or to behave rationally. The idea was developed in his books Public Opinion and The Phantom Public. Moreover, John Dewey's Aristotelian perspective emphasized the supremacy of public opinion as the best safeguard to democracy. Dewey, in his seminal work The Public and Its Problems, argued that structural changes were needed. The essential need is the improvement of the methods and conditions of debate, discussion, and persuasion. That is the problem of the public. Dewey's thinking reflected a profound concern with improving how citizens learned and how they could reach their fullest potential advocating the use of logic. German social theorist Jürgen Habermas contributed the idea of public sphere to the discussion of public opinion. Thus, in 1962, Habermas introduced the concept in his book The Structural Transformation of the Public Sphere. The public sphere, or bourgeois public, is, according to Habermas, where something approaching public opinion can be formed. Habermas claimed that the public sphere featured universal access and rational debate. However, he believes that a variety of factors resulted in the eventual decay of the public sphere, including the growth of a commercial mass media, which turned the critical public into a passive consumer public. According to Habermas, the public sphere is a discursive social space where private individuals come together as a public. In this space, the public, all citizens, has an unhindered access to information. It facilitates the maximum public participation and people can freely debate the key social and political issues. Consequently, these practices promote the participatory democracy separate from the public authority which is embodied in government and state institutions. The American sociologist Herbert Bloomer has proposed an altogether different conception of the public. According to Bloomer, public opinion is discussed as a form of collective behavior which is made up of those who are discussing a given public issue at any one time. Given this definition, there are many publics. Each of them comes into being when an issue arises and ceases to exist when the issue is resolved. According to cognitive psychology, the reality perceived by the natural capacity of each individual is modified by the group's opinion. The perception of reality by the individual is thus modified by the opinion of the group that influences the individual's ability to perceive and thus causes the individual to modify his own perception in favor of that of the group that influences him. This perspective has been largely embraced by various authors like Joy, who suggest that events in general are a media construct which relies on the large coverage and therefore the public recognition and acceptance. Communication and public opinion. Communication has received less attention as a central variable of the public opinion process. 
Price and Roberts divide the public opinion process into interlevel relations among individuals, groups, and organizations over time. Communication is central to the process, even at the intrapersonal level, where the relationship between cognitions and behavior can be conceptualized as a continuing dialectic. According to Price and Roberts, information obtained from both media and social sources is integrated with old information as public opinion evolves. Individuals incorporate new opinion-related information with old cognitions, selecting which new ideas to incorporate and which to dismiss or ignore. Information, News Media, and Opinion Within the last decade, the way information and communication technologies have evolved and the way people use them deeply change our means of communication and public opinion. Moreover, for centuries, the media has developed a considerable power over societies and different groups, regardless of their education, wealth, or status, influencing people's thoughts, perceptions, or actions, and therefore shaping public opinion. The media offer the same information to a large number of people, which translates into the sharing of one side opinion by the greatest number of people, which tends to provoke the noble effect called by Elizabeth Noel Newman as the spiral of silence. This means that people begin analyzing generally accepted opinions in public space and avoid expressing an opinion that would place them on the margins of society. Thus, when the media favors a certain opinion, most people will embrace that perspective and will be less and less willing to express their own if this one is different, believing that they are alone in thinking so and leaving the place to the mediatized information. Relevant information often is delivered via mass media, which simultaneously act as a channel for information dissemination as well as another filter within the public opinion process. Media outlets choose between many options when determining precisely which issues to cover. The direct impact of the media filter is that those who are exposed to this selected information have the opportunity to obtain more knowledge about an issue. Some authors characterize the role of the media as being a virtuous and constructive one for bringing citizens closer to each other by enabling the sharing of information on both good and bad things, the dissemination of knowledge, and the participation in joint initiatives. Thus, media appear relevant actors in the process of formation of citizens' attitudes and public opinion. The media have played an important role in educating people on matters of public interest in general. Media can make significant contributions to information flows and play an agenda-setting role. Media can promote a model of shared responsibility in which citizens are encouraged to play an active role in the production and sharing of information, this being mainly seen within the last years via social media. The role of the news media has shifted from gatekeeping to gatewatching whereby they publicize and share relevant news content rather than focus solely on its production. Social media can also facilitate multi-directional information flows. So, what is public opinion? Perhaps public opinion's most simple definition is citizens' attitudes about political issues, leaders, institutions, and events. From the examination of some theories on public opinion, it is clear that no generalization can be made on the role of public opinion the public opinion asserts itself differently from one democracy to another. Moreover, theories of public opinion have always been relevant to the field of mass communication and information, the means of mass communication playing the central role of both formation and expression of public opinion. The news media focus the public's attention on certain issues, leading many people to form opinions about them and making possible for public opinion to encompass large numbers of individuals and wide geographic areas.